Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Meg's How To Videos, where today we're going to discuss how to fix an E-Zip electric scooter. So here I have an E-Zip 1000 series electric scooter. Now it doesn't have to be a 1000 series, it could also be a 750, a 500, a 250, whatever series you have, this video will most likely help you out. Now in this video, we're going to be testing and diagnosing problems with the electrical system using a multimeter. Now if you don't know how to use a multimeter, feel free to check out one of my other how-to videos. So first we're going to start by testing the batteries. Now when I found the scooter in the trash, it didn't have its own battery pack, so I ended up buying three separate batteries and wiring them up in series. If you have the original battery pack, make sure it's fully charged. And when you test it, you should get 36 volts or more. Now, I can test each one of these batteries individually and make sure that they have 12 volts each. Or I can test the main power and ground wire to make sure I have the full 36 volts. Now in between the main power cable and the charging port is an inline 40 amp fuse. You can test that fuse by testing for continuity. If the fuse is good, move on to testing the charging port. Now, if you know if your batteries are good, but you're not getting a charge, it could possibly be your charging port. Now before we can test the charging port, we need to test the charging cable. And to do so, plug it into the wall take a multimeter and test the negative and positive prongs. You should get a reading over 36 volts. To test your charging port, make sure your charger is already plugged in the wall and plug it in. Once you have your charger plugged in, locate the power wire that goes to the batteries. Place the positive lead into the female end and the negative lead into the male end. Now you should get a reading close to or above 36 volts. If you do, that means that both your charging port and cable are good. If you know you are getting a charge and your batteries are good, the next step could be your power switch. Now to test if we're getting power to the switch, have it in the off position. Next, take your multimeter and touch the upper right and lower left prongs on the back of the switch. You can see we're getting roughly 37.4 volts, which means that we're getting the correct amount of voltage to this switch. Here at the power control module, you can find a wire that's labeled power. Disconnect it. This is the end that's coming from the power switch. So with your batteries hooked up and the switch in the on position, shove the positive lead into the male end and the negative lead into the female end. You can see we're roughly getting 38 volts, which means the switch is good. Now that we've eliminated the charging port, charging cable, batteries, and power switch, we can now move on to the power control module. Attached to the power control module, locate the wire labeled throttle. Disconnect the throttle cable and test pins two and three from the left side. You should roughly get five volts. Now we're gonna test the throttle handle. To do so, locate the green wire attached to the male end plug. Then probe that wire with a positive lead to your multimeter. Then ground out the negative lead. Next, turn the throttle handle. You should get a reading of about four volts. Next, we're gonna test for power going to the motor. Locate the motor cable attached to your power control module. Unplug it. Your bottom end is your negative, and your top end is your positive automatically read about nine volts and when you twist the throttle handle you should get your full 36 volts now if you're getting the proper voltage through the power control module going to the motor you're gonna otherwise need to probe your wires to see if you have a bad wire or you're gonna need to take apart your motor and test your motor if that's the case most likely you're gonna end up having to buy a new one so the main issue this electric scooter had was a bad throttle handle. And I guess that's a pretty common issue with these electric scooters. So instead of buying the E-Zip electric throttle handle, I ended up buying a knockoff brand that was about half the price and they're way better quality. Instead of having these color buttons, you ended up having a full on display that reads the voltage straight from the battery. 
And the grip is made out of aluminum and rubber instead of just cheesy plastic. Now if you do end up buying these, I found a way to wire them. First, make sure you keep the actual connector from the old throttle handle. And then you just splice the wires together. Now this brown wire ended up not working with this throttle handle. Which instead had a yellow wire which I just wired directly to the main power going to the battery right here. Well, there you have it. Now you know how to diagnose and fix your E-Zip electric scooter. If you enjoyed this video, please click on the like button below. That and subscribe to my channel to see more how-to videos. If this video helped you out, or you have another idea for another how-to video, please leave it in the comments below. But until next time, God bless and good luck.